Welcome back to my garage. On this video, we're going to talk about work holding and setting your work offsets. This is just a sampling of the various kinds of work holding you can use to hold your workpiece firmly in place while you machine it. Here's a vise with various kinds of jaws. Here you have strap clamps, and then you have the super glue and tape option. Let's start with the vise. The vise is very versatile and will be the go-to solution for most machinists just starting out. You can use a vise with traditional hardened jaws, talon grip jaws for thin parts, versa grip jaws for oddly shaped parts, and aluminum soft jaws that can be machined to fit an exact profile. Let's go over how to set up a vise in your machine. The first step is to stone the bottom of your vise. This ensures you don't have any burrs that could keep your vise from sitting perfectly flat. Next, stone your table. Now carefully place the vise on the table. It helps to move the table all the way forward in the y-axis so you don't have to reach as far. Place two bolts assemblies in the middle T-slot on the table. Next, we'll do what is called tramming the vise. You want the back jaw of your vise to be perfectly parallel to the x-axis of travel. We'll do this by using an indicator. The first thing you want to do is tighten down one of the nuts. This anchors one side. Don't skip this part. Most newbies get frustrated with this process, and this is usually the thing they forget. Next, we'll use a mag base to attach the indicator arm to the spindle. Adjust the indicator so the dial can be read easily, and place the tip close to the left side of the back jaw of the vise. Now you want to slowly jog the Y direction until the back jaw hits the indicator. Set the zero on the indicator. Now you'll jog in the X direction to run the indicator arm across the back jaw to discover which direction needs to be adjusted. You'll notice the dial going up or down. You want to use a dead blow hammer to lightly tap the vise on the side to adjust it. A good tip is to lightly push or pull on the indicator to determine which direction the indicator is moving. This is a quick check to make sure you bump it in the proper direction. Tap on the left side to push the right side back. Tap on the right side to push the left side back. So for example, if you run the indicator over the back jaw and the indicator says it moved 10 thousandths, that should mean you should tap the side to bring it back toward zero five thousandths. I've heard it said you should only have to run it left and right once. It usually takes me a few times of back and forth to get it perfect. Once you have it dialed in, carefully tighten down the other nut. Check if it's trammed again after tightening the nut as it could have shifted when you tightened. It may just require another light tap. That's it. That's how to set up a vise in a CNC mill. Please don't get too discouraged in this process. It takes practice to get comfortable with it. Let's talk a little bit about parts that are too big to put in a vise. For that, you'll want to use strap clamps. I've got a kit with various size studs and clamps. You'll use these triangular pieces in conjunction with the clamp to make sure the straps are level or nose down a little. And make sure you keep the stud close to the part. If you plan on cutting below the level of your workpiece, use a sacrificial plate underneath the workpiece or else you'll be machining into your table. I typically use some scrap aluminum. Another good option for holding thin parts is to use super glue and tape. Put the tape on the underside of the workpiece and put tape on the top side of a sacrificial plate. Then spread a bead of glue on either surface and press together. Let it sit for a bit and then machine it. I find lighter cuts work best. I've scrapped quite a few parts by going too aggressive when using the super glue and tape method. If you aren't running coolant, painter's tape works just fine. If you do want to run coolant, use heat resistant tape. Another option that is very popular and extremely handy is adding a fixture plate directly to your mill table. I recommend this one from Saunders Machine Works. They make fixture plates designed specifically to fit the table on your Tormach mill. The fixture plate serves many of the same functions as the other options. It just gives you more flexibility. The dowel holes allow quick and easy reference points. More holes give you more versatile setups. And the vices they sell are low profile, which frees up more of your Z travel and provides more clearance below your tool changer. For your first part, let's keep it simple and use the vise. For this example, I'm using a 2 inch wide by 2 inch deep by 1 inch tall piece of aluminum. You'll want to put the stock on the appropriate size parallels to allow for enough sticking up out of the vise so that you won't cut into the vise top. Place your 1 inch parallels into the vise and then place your workpiece on top of it. Make sure you have over half an inch sticking out past the top of the vise. Then tighten down the vise with the handle. Hit the workpiece with a dead blow hammer and check that the parallels aren't sliding around in the jaws. You'll know you've got it properly seated when the parallels won't slide out. Now we have to set the work coordinates. That means we have to let the machine know where the workpiece is in relation to the spindle. 
you have a few options to find your work offsets, like the Heimer probe or the simple edge finder. I prefer to use the passive probe. It's a huge time saver and it works seamlessly with Pathpilot. I'm going to go over the procedure for using the passive probe, but before you can do the next steps, follow the directions in your documentation in order to calibrate your passive probe. First, make sure you don't have a tool in the spindle. Press the tool load button and load the tool, making sure the dogs are lined up. Now enter the number 99 by the letter T. Tool 99 is the probe. Now let's probe the Z height of the workpiece. Jog the table so that the spindle is directly above the workpiece. Then jog the spindle until it is a half inch above the workpiece. On the probe tab, press the button to probe the Z height. Now jog the table over so that the spindle is offset a little ways from the back left corner. Then lower the Z height to just below the top of the workpiece. Now press the button to probe the back left corner. It'll first do the X and then the Y. Jog the spindle back up and remove the probe. That's it. You now have a vise installed, your workpiece in the vise, and the coordinate set for where that workpiece is in relation to the spindle. Congratulations, you're ready to move on to setting up your tools. But we'll go over that in the next video.